Can an 80-year-old drug, one that costs pennies to produce and is prescribed to over 50 million Americans a year, prevent lung cancer? In short, no. But since I still have 140 seconds left, I would like to talk about a problem facing the medical literature today, one that's illustrated well by this study. Appearing in the journal Cancer Prevention Research, Sakoda and colleagues wanted to evaluate whether the popular anti-diabetes drug metformin was associated with lung cancer. They examined 40,000 patients in the Kaiser Permanente dataset, and they did a really excellent job with their analysis, avoiding almost all of the pitfalls that we typically see in pharmaceutical studies. They accounted for when patients were on and off the drugs, they adjusted for appropriate confounders, and they did multiple sensitivity analyses. And here's the thing. It was a negative study. There is no link between metformin and lung cancer. Seriously, that's it. But in the world of academic publishing, a negative study is a hard sell. I'm a researcher too, and I have felt the existential angst of a negative study, and it is really tempting to add some spin to your results. The way you add spin in the medical literature world is by doing subgroup analyses, as many as possible. The hope is that you find some subgroup where your hypothesis is borne out. And indeed, that's what happens here. Among non-smokers, the use of metformin was associated with a 40% reduction in the risk of lung cancer. But remember that the risk of lung cancer in non-smokers is really low. After 15 years of follow-up, less than half of 1% of non-smokers in this study developed lung cancer. If we believe we can reduce that percentage by 40%, you would have to treat 625 non-smokers with metformin to prevent a single case of lung cancer. And that's the problem. It's easier to publish a positive study than a negative study. Until we change the culture of academic publishing, which values impact over scientific validity, we'll continue to muddy the waters in the scientific literature. So I'll go ahead and say what the authors could have said. This is a really important study. Using an excellent data set and robust statistical methods, we have shown that there is no link between metformin and lung cancer. It remains one hell of a diabetes drug, though. For MedPage Today, I'm Perry Wilson.